So we are going to build our very first transition logic project. And in this project, we are going to focus on the fundamentals and not so much on the design aesthetics or doing a super design. What we just want to do is nail down the terminology and the theory behind transition logic. And if you watch the earlier tutorials, it kind of describes the theory behind transition logic and some of the terminology and plugins that you'll need to know when working with transition logic. But to begin, what we're going to do is I made a folder here called Transition Logic, and I'm just going to make a new folder here or put a new project folder within this Transition Logic, and I'm just going to call this TL1 since this will be our first project. And within this project folder, I'm actually going to create my new scenes. Now, going back to the earlier tutorial talking about the theory and terminology, you had two things that you need to remember as far as scene design. One was called the master or the background scene, the other called the call-up scene. This time, what we're going to make right here is the master slash background scene. So you can call this whatever you want. Me, I like to call it master. It's easy to remember. Whatever you call yours, just jot the name down because you're going to need to know that name later. So I'm going to open up my scene here, my master scene, by double-clicking it. First thing that I want to do is kind of organize this. And the way that I organize my group and scene tree is not necessarily the right way. It's just the way that I like to do it. And what I'm going to do first is call this one lower third bottom. Now I'm actually going to add another group here. Like I said, this is just the way that I do it because if anyone ever needs to come in here and troubleshoot this, then they can kind of easily follow what I'm doing here. And I'm going to call this one lower third bottom design. All of my design elements that I'm using to build my lower third will go into this group. So now I'm going to go into my built-ins and we're just going to use a built-in objects for this project. And I'm going to use a rectangle here. I'm going to slide it into my lower third bottom design group as a sub container. And I'm going to go into my rectangle editor here. I'm just going to set the width to about 700, maybe the height to 25. And I'm going to move it down towards the bottom of the screen here. So this will be our bottom lower third. I also want to add a little color. So I'm going to use the use vertex colors in my rectangle here and we'll just make it yellow. It's bright enough for everyone to see. And if I want to do the last color here with a little bit of a gradient orange, I can do that as well. Next, we need to animate this on. So what I'm going to do to animate it is use the transform editor and I'm going to set my axis center to left and bottom. I kind of work backwards sometimes when I work with keyframes. So I'm going to set my timeline to 60. I'm going to set a keyframe. Then I'm going to rewind my timeline and use my scaling here to set it to zero and set another keyframe. Now, once I did that, you can see that it added this little animation or spiked wheel on my rectangle. And if I click on that, it takes us into the stage. I'm just going to make this a little bit quicker by adjusting this keyframe here. And if you needed to switch these keyframes around, you know, you could just take the keyframe and drag it back or however you wanted it or however you had keyframed it. So we just check it, okay, it starts off and then it comes on, now it's fine. Now the animation got thrown into this director called default. Since we didn't have any other directors in here, it created a default director by default. So what I want to do is actually rename this director and I'm just going to right click on the director and hit rename and I'm going to call this L3. And if you have a piece of paper, you can write that down because we're going to need to know that later as well. So now that I have my director renamed, what I need to do is add stop points. So I'm going to adjust my timeline to the very beginning here. And I'm going to click this add stop. When I do that, it adds a stop point. I can click on the stop point and it highlights it orange. Now I'm going to come over to the right hand side and name this very first stop point capital O. Capital O is a must for a naming convention. It stands for out. And as you can see, when our timeline is right here in this director, our bottom lower third rectangle is out. It's off the screen. It's not being seen. So I'm going to move my timeline to the next keyframe. I'm going to highlight my director. I'm going to add a stop point here. I'm going to click on that stop point, highlight it, and then come over to the right and rename it. And I'm going to call this one A. You can call yours whatever you want. Whatever you named it, write it down because we're going to need to know the name of that later as well. Now that I have my animation on my rectangle, we need to do one more step here in this master scene. So I'm going to add another group here inside of my lower third bottom group. And this group here is what we're going to use to add the toggle. And the toggle kind of controls our transition logic. The most important thing to remember about this toggle group is this toggle group needs to be called the exact same thing as our director. So I'm going to call this L3, this group. And I'm going to go into my built-ins, my CP tab, 
into my container and grab this toggle plugin. I'm going to drag this down onto my group. And notice when I did that, it automatically added these four subcontainers. And we'll discuss what they are a little bit later. What I need to do now is go into my toggle, click on it, and it takes us into the toggle plugin editor. The only thing that I need to do here is hit this default keyframes. And once we do that, what we should see is we get an animation on our container. And if I go into the stage, we have additional directors here now. So some of these directors, if we open them up, actually have an animation. Some of them do not. We don't need to concern ourselves with what they are right now or what they do. We'll discuss that in a later tutorial. But for now, we are almost done. So one of the last things that I wanted to do is take a snapshot of this scene of what we designed already. So I'm going to hit this little snap button right here. And I'm just going to call this L3 bottom. And I'm going to hit OK. And now within our images here, we have this little snapshot, which we're going to use in the next stop. The next thing we want to do is hit save. So I'm going to save this scene and we're going to close out. We're all finished with that. I'm going to go back into my folder, into my scene here, and I'm going to create what now is called the call up scene for this L3 bottom. So I'm going to create a new scene and we can call this pretty much whatever we want. If you want to do a number convention like 100, 200, 300, that's fine. We can do that. I'm going to name mine something other than a number. So I'm going to type in L3 bottom, just like that. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to open up this new scene that we just created. And first thing that I like to do is to grab that snapshot that we took. So in my image tab, we took the snapshot of the L3. I'm going to put this in the background image. And this provides us placement for where our font should go. So next thing that I need to do is actually create a font or the text that I want. And to do this, I'm going to start by creating a group here. And I'm going to go find a font. I don't have any fonts in my folder. So I'm just going to come up into my globals here and look for a font. And maybe I'll just copy this into my transition logic folder so I can find it. And I'm just going to drag this font down as a sub container here. Now I'm going to click on it. I'm going to scale it down and reposition it over my bar here. If you want to add a material, we can do that too. So I'm going to create a new material. We'll make this one black. We'll just first make it black. We'll hit save, close, it's closed. Now we're going to drag it down onto our font. The big important thing here is that we need to separate the Z position. So I'm going to set this Z space of this font out to two because in our background or master scene, our yellow lower third bottom was set to zero plane. And if this call up scene is set to zero and the background scene is set to zero, they will cancel each other out. We won't be able to see it. So it's important that you adjust the Z position of this font. Now, the one thing that's going to be important also is to give control to the operator to be able to change the name or the text of this font. So I'm going to go into my built-ins. I'm going to go to the control folder. I'm going to search for my control text plugin. I'm going to drag this down onto my font. And once I do that, you can see that it automatically adds this object. And that's the reason why we added that topmost group there. So I can come into my text function here and I can give it the field identifier that I want. This one is a one. I can give it a description if I want. It's fine the way it is. I can set all my variables here. Once that is all set, I'm going to go into my object here and I'm going to click on it. Now we can give it a description if we want. So this is our lower third bottom. Next, we need to turn on this transition logic button. It's off by default. I'm going to turn it on. When we turn it on, we get these things here called layer identifier, state identifier, and background scene. Well, we already know what the background scene is. That one's fairly easy and we can check the name fairly easy. If we go back into our folder and into our scenes, we have a scene here called master. That is our background scene. So I'm going to come in here and type master. Now we need to also know the layer identifier and the layer identifier within our master scene was that director or the toggle group that we created. And the name of that was L3. We also need to know the state identifier and it's asking for the state identifier that is currently at the in state. So wherever this yellow bar is at that current state, that's what we want to add here or what stop point. So our stop point, our second stop point was a because the graphic is in. Now, once I have that, 
it should be all set up. The only thing that I need to do here, since I'm using this method, is to turn off my background image. So once all that is set, I'm going to hit save here. And now we have two scenes. We have a master and then the L3 bottom. And this is what we can use to play out now. So to test this out, what I need to do is go, actually go into Trio, and I'm going to hop over into Trio and test it out now. Now, since I'm using Trio to test this out, what I want to do is import my scene here. And I'm going to go into Import Scenes. I'm going to navigate to the folder and our TL1 folder. Now, the only scene that I need to import is the call-up scene, which means L3 bottom. I never, ever want to or need to import this master or background scene, only the call-up scene. So once I have this call up scene, what I'm going to do is double click it. It's going to load it up. And here we have the text control that we can change. So this will say, we'll give this one here and we're going to hit save as and just go give it a number. So basically what we need to do is play these two things out. And what I like to do is if we right click on here, we can do what's called a direct take. So when I do a direct take on the graphic, what we should be seeing is our graphic. And if I make Trio a little bit smaller here so that we can see it on the engine, I'm going to go to my next scene that I saved. And I know it's a little bit difficult to see here, but I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to hit direct take. And what it does is transitions to the other name. I'm going to go back to the other graphic, hit direct take, and it transitions. Now, if I do a direct take out, it's going to take that graphic out. If I do a direct take, it's going to bring that graphic in. So anytime you want this scene or graphic to come in or, in or out, you do a direct take out or a direct take. So I'm going to do a direct take and we'll try this other scene, which is just basically a copy or a page saved off from that template we imported. When I do a direct take on that, the name comes up. If I want to go to the other name, I just take that page, do a direct take. And when I'm ready for this graphic to come out, I can do a direct take out. That is the first part of this transition logic tutorial. Next, we're going to move on and start adding some more components into our scene.